How you guys doing? What's up? What's up? Hola. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Blah, blah, blah. How you doing? All right. There we go. We are here. We are in the house. Um, oh, we're not even that late. How you guys doing out there, guys? This is Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, and I am coming at you from the Wizard's Tower, okay? And um, this is where we do our magic. This is where we do our thing. Hey, what's going on? This is where we are. This is what we do. And I'm normally, ha 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 ha, see, I turned off the phone now. Um, so here's the deal, all right? This is the dark side of the room, okay? This is turning to be my most regular show. I'm trying to get back on my regular schedule, but with, um, you know, no, serious, serious truth, like real talk, with um, all of the CV-19 stuff that's come down, I have not, and I mean this, I have not been able to really um, get supplies and um, do what I can, that's better, do what I can to make sure that we've got the supplies that we need to make stuff, um, and I'm always, 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 always trying to come up with more stuff to talk about and to go into as far as games and comics and escapism and all of this jazz. I am trying, y'all. I'm really trying. However, with the way that stuff is going on in the world, I am tired. I am so tired. And I ain't gonna lie, this is probably gonna be a longer show. I got my coffee. I got my cigarettes. I've got everything that I'm gonna need today to talk about this stuff, okay? Now, truth be told, um, today, I want your guys' input. I want your participation. So, what I'm gonna have us do is we got all the other stuff down there, the Twitter, the Instagram, the, all the other stuff. Um, send me your questions and your comments and stuff over at back in the deck at gmail.com that's b-a-c-k-i-n-t-h-e-d-e-c-k -E -E at gmail.com um send me your send me your questions because we are going to talk about this stuff and um i got a lot to say and i've been trying not to bring it on to the channel i've been trying to keep all of this about escapism and fun and happy and stuff to think about outside of all this stuff and um i'm gonna tell you this it has been difficult. So before we get through all that stuff, we are gonna do a little housekeeping, let a few more people show up, because uh, this is real, so we are gonna let a few people show up here. Um, if you guys wanna help us out, there's a couple of ways that you can do this, okay? Uh, way number one is very simple. All you gotta do, if you're watching us right now, live on the Twitter, like, hey, look at us, look at our punums there, isn't this fun? Boom, hit one of these buttons. That'll let you get involved in all this stuff that's going on. Um, notice the first one is Patreon. That's how we keep the lights on. And yes, we do have a Patreon. Now, if you guys get more value than a refill of coffee at a Starbucks or a coffee bean or any of a small local place that don't do free refills, then head over to patreon.com slash bid underscore p and hit us up for the cost of one dollar a month you guys really keep us going you help us keep the internet on help us upgrade our equipment when i need new lenses new lights new green screens um new magical components that i use new props and yesterday the challenge was set you guys want to see me play with puppets i need 500 subscribers okay y'all give me 500 subscribers I will bring a puppet on the show. I might even give them their own. So that's what that's doing. But um, first off, yeah, like I said, if you guys want to help us out that way, that's cool. Um, 
We got six tiers, they go over there, and once you hit our royalty tier, like Shannon Boom Boom Lay, His Majesty King Paul Mansfield, and of course our ace in the hole, Jennifer Kroll, then I give you shout outs every single time I broadcast, which is at minimum Monday through Thursday. And if I get called in to my day job where I'm shipping stuff all over the freaking country, then I skip that day and I put another extra day in. So we're talking content, live content four days a week and we give away prizes and all that stuff i've got like loads and loads of games from companies that donate stuff from other people that donate stuff and once this COVID is over we're going to go back to taking board games and miniatures games and crafting back to community centers all over at least the los angeles area and we're trying to do this um, freaking nationwide. Thank you so much. Who is that? Oh, that's Russian Wolf. Hey, thank you very much. Yeah, Russian Wolf. Cool. Thank you for the bit. Um, every little bit helps and every little thing that you guys do is magic that I use to make this world suck just a little less. Now, if you guys are regular people that are normally tuning into the shows, I'm letting you guys know right now. Oh, well, thank you very much. Cool. Oh, cool. We got Vixen uh, hooking up somebody with um, another one, um, you know, another person. Um, hey, man, you guys, okay, you guys are killing me here. Thank you very much. So, yeah, um, like I said, we got a lot of stuff that we are trying to get done, and that's all to make the world a better place. And seriously, wow, Nerf Muff, Russian Wolf, um, sweet. You guys are just uh, loading us up. This is really awesome, especially doing it one at a time. Thank you, Overlord. Thank you, uh, Lilithiana. All you guys, thank you very much for showing up because we got a lot of stuff to talk about today. Okay? Now, as you guys know, let me ooh, uh. now as you guys know the world is on fire okay it's really on fire and that is awesome yeah oh this is fun i'm getting bit after bit after bit hey thank you dr fusion um so like i'm saying the world is on fire and everything is so so difficult right now and i'm letting you guys know this if you guys are normally used to, um, you know, really normally used to watching me on the show and, um, you know, if you guys are used to watching me on the show, you guys know that when I was young, I lived through the LA riots. Hmm, this is funny. I'm wondering, Russia Wolf, Nerf Wolf, Overlord, you guys are just loading up the chat with singular bit donations. I'm almost betting that we're being hacked right now, and I don't care, okay? Um, because I can always turn off the sound for the announcement, and we can keep going. So, here is what I'm sitting up um, looking at on that, okay? Um, what, um, <laughs> what I'm looking at is... This is my second time through something like this in 30 years, okay? Second time, okay? And what does that mean? That means in 30 years, I am going through some flashbacks to 92. Okay, for those of you guys that are new, um, I'm a 43 year old man and I grew up in South Central Los Angeles during the time where all those movies were made. Okay, Boys in the Hood, Colors, New Jack City. That was my childhood. And why was it my childhood? I got a lot of friends out there that are like, well, you know, there was gang violence, there was this, there was that. Yeah, there was a lot of that stuff. And there was a lot of things that's making me very, very, dude, you guys are awesome. Thank you. Um, a lot of that stuff that made me really afraid for my life growing up. Okay? I mean, seriously. It's a um, huge, huge, huge problem growing up because a lot of people think, you know, I, I get a lot of stuff online. Well, if you don't like the cops so much, you'd better not call them if something happens to you. Guess what? I don't. And truth be told, nobody, not a single person that I grew up with calls the cops if anything happens. And I will tell you why right now, okay? 
when the cops show up and we're around, we get handcuffed. That's what happens, okay? I can tell you loads of stories, but let me tell you about one that happened in the 21st century, since you guys out there might be saying, oh, well, 92 was a long time ago and things have changed. Number one, if we're gonna talk about shelf life, I won't talk about the stuff that has happened to my family and people that look like me over the history of this country if you don't bring up Jesus to me. As long as we're talking shelf life and it was a long time ago and let it go, I'll make that deal with you. But I will talk to you about something seriously, okay? Um, about 15 years ago, no, not even 15. I think it was like 10 years ago. I was a bass player in a band at a bar i was making like 50 dollars a night god knows i needed the money okay um i had a suspended license and i didn't um i didn't drive after dark because i was living in a very very hostile area at least hostile to people that look like me all right um so what does that mean that means i get harassed handcuffed question just for being nearby somewhere that somebody has complained about a crime happening so i'm outside of this bar i've got my bass guitar with me i'm sitting on my bass amp and two dudes start fighting and this is at that time of the at the time of the night where the bar starts kicking everybody out and they close the door so i'm waiting for my ride his name was tom um to come and pick me up and take me home Okay, and two dudes get into a fight, right? And of course, two dudes get into a fight. It's the suburbs. Somebody calls the cops because when something happens, call a policeman. That's what they told us on Sesame Street and that's what we listened to. The cops show up and they move my bass guitar. They move my amp. They handcuff me. They shove me into the car. And the only reason I didn't go to jail that night was because the bartender had to first hear about it and then come out of the bar and identify me as not the person that was in the fight. All right. Another time I was working and um, I was working over by Sony Studios. Um, it was after dark. I had my motorcycle permit and in California, if you have a motorcycle permit, you cannot ride your bike after dark. And it was very dark, so I couldn't go home that night. I was walking down the street about a mile and a half to my best friend's house, and a police officer tailed me for three quarters of a mile. And when I went into the 7-Eleven, and I bought my Mountain Dew, and I bought my cupcakes, I came out, and the cop pulled me over and said, we have report of a sexual assault that's happened in the area and you meet the description. I know it wasn't you, but I need the victim to tell us that we want that you're not the one that did it. And I'm like, could you give me the description? And it was black guy, long hair, wearing a motorcycle jacket. Now in this area, there are a lot of people with dreadlocks. Okay. And then I asked where the, um, where the crime happened and he gave me the cross streets. And the cross streets were three and a half miles in the direction that I was walking 10 minutes prior, 10 minutes prior to me being followed, which means I would have had to sexually assault this woman, travel three and a half miles, dump my vehicle, get out on foot and walk back toward the scene of the crime within 10 minutes. And even when the police officer is telling me they know it wasn't me, which is a really nice way to shut me down from any sort of complaint, I'm standing with my hands handcuffed behind me in front of the cop car while they've got all of their lights um, spewed on me. For this lady to say, no, that's not him. He wasn't wearing a white motorcycle jacket. He doesn't have blue dreadlocks, you know? That's the life I live. Now, I see a lot of people all over social media who just don't get it, okay? Who just don't get it. Over the course of my adult life, this has been a ritual that I have gone through at least once a month, okay? And it's averaged 
out to be about once every three weeks over the course of my adult life. There was a point um, back in like 2010, 2011, that this was happening to me every six days, every six days, because I match the description, okay? Um, so do I call the cops? No, because if there is a crime, they show up, they see a black person, and I have to prove my innocence. I can't tell you how many times I've had a 45 millimeter pointed at my face from someone with a badge, but I can give you a list of cities. You know, I can give you a whole bunch of cities, you know, and that's just in Los Angeles County and Ventura County in the state, in the state that is one of the most progressive. Okay. California is one of the best states in the country. And this is my life. I can't imagine what it's like in Mississippi or Ohio or Illinois or any of the other 50 states. Okay. Um, and yet there are still people popping up on my, um, on all my social media saying, oh my God, I don't understand. It's not that I don't condone violence. It's not that I condone violence, but blah, 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 blah. Now, I'm not going to bring up Joyner Lucas. I'm not I, I'm not going to be that guy. But see, there's a lot of stuff that a lot of people need to understand, okay? Um, most people don't have to walk through the world looking the way that I do and feeling the stuff the way that I do, okay? Um, here's the thing, okay? A lot of people, when they see controversial stuff, they see really big things out there, they were taught through no fault of their own that practicing empathy is putting themselves in the shoes of the party that's been wronged. The problem is that we're also taught to always, always, always make sure that things aren't our fault, okay? To always make sure that we're good people, all right? And one of the big things, one of the big things that are that are huge about being a good person is recognizing that even if Anne Frank is right and fundamentally people are good, that doesn't mean that you can't do bad things. Okay, I want you to think about that for a minute. Um, I equate a lot of this stuff to just simple household accidents, all right? Um, when the whole thing of microaggressions came out and all these people like, oh, you little snowflakes, it's a joke, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, no, 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 no. So here's the thing. All right. People's actions have impact. You don't see this any clearer than in the kitchen. Okay. Um, how do I know this? Well, yeah, it's simple. If you're in the kitchen, you're washing dishes and you accidentally knock over a glass, okay? You're not a bad person, okay? Accidents happen, you're not a bad person. But that does not mean that there is not liquid and glass all over the floor, all right? Now, when it comes to the history of the human race, something's going on right now that we get stuck with either I didn't do it or I didn't mean to. But that's not the conversation. The conversation is what impact do your actions or your lack of action have? You might not have knocked over the glass. That's cool. All right. But grab a broom. Help clean it up. You know, I mean, seriously, it, it because there's still sharded glass and something that causes you to freaking um, slip and fall on the floor. Just, just think about that. Um, hang on a minute. I'm going to turn off the sound on one of these things because, you know, thank you guys for donating so much and keeping everything, everything up and going. This is really awesome. OK, I'm loving the bits. I'm like Steven Universe. I'm like bits, bits. Give me the bits. You know, I, I really am. Um, but let's see here. 
Ooh, man. Yeah, look at all this. Look at all this. So, do, 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 do. Look, there's a horse. Let's go take some pictures and put them in a magazine. There we go. Yeah, let us, bits alert. Ah, yep, 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 yep. So what are we gonna do? We are going to knock that out, no sound. And yeah. All right. Ooh, thank you very much. Yeah, seriously? Damn, thank you guys, thank you. All right, so. I'm getting a call, but I can't, um, uh, yeah, there we go. All right, so I just turned off, uh, yeah, I just turned off the notification because, yeah, I'm being spammed. I love that kind of thing. I'm like, y'all ain't gonna silence me. I'm sorry about that. That ain't happening. Um, so, yeah, as I said, all right, um, by the way, thanks, John, for the donation. Seriously, I didn't even know that that was, like, a real announcement. But, as I was saying, um, hang on here, yeah. I turned off the sound. Yeah, we good. I love it. So many different ways to try and hack something, but that's okay. Um, as I said, um, yeah, where was I? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, like I was saying with all this stuff, um, one of the things that really comes down to is a lot of people don't get the impact of their actions. And then when people like me try and talk about the impact of their actions, um, the most popular response I get is la 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 and I'm like oh my god you know <laughs> I mean seriously oh yeah uh roguelike just letting you know this is like tabletop RPGs um tabletop board games miniatures today is actually normally the day where I'm teaching you guys how to play uh, how to make terrain um stuff like this yeah see I'm interacting with you guys I'm there um but yeah, and then occasionally I'll play something like Baldur's Gate and talk with people. But yeah, yeah, bunch of stuff. Yeah, we're here. We're doing a whole bunch of stuff. And our main thing here, Rogue, like just to um, answer the question that's out there is we are here. We are gamers. And most of us are people of color, women, LGBTQ, neurodivergent, or just fiscally disenfranchised. We broke. And we tend to not be welcomed at a lot of tables for not being what they expect us to be. So this is the place where we can go. You know, I set this place up specifically because I worked in games and I worked in comics for so long that I got tired of seeing heads turn and rooms go silent when a woman walks in the door or when somebody in a wheelchair comes in the door. I got tired of people saying, whoa, you play D&D, but you're black. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I get it. I'm tired. All right. Um, so, yeah, that's that's a real thing. And that's one of the things that um, that we are here for. So, as I was saying, um, with the stuff going on out there, um, I need people to really understand, you know, just in the past week, we've seen stuff all over again, you know, um, from Central Park, you know, Central Park, this woman, you know, calling the cops. I cannot tell you how many times in my adult life, hell, in the past five years, I've had people look at me saying, if you keep doing what you do, I'm calling the cops when I was telling them to stop hurting me or to stop making me look bad at work or to stop um, stop doing stuff that would make our neighbors call the cops, like smoking weed in our apartment before weed was legal. I'm like, you need to stop doing this stuff at this level. I'm trying to keep us safe, you know? And yeah, it's making me mad that you're doing this because I'm the one that's in danger. But you see, when you have my skin color, your life isn't determined by what you do. Your life is determined 
by what other people think, okay? I don't threaten anybody, but if someone feels as though I've threatened them, then they call the cops and say that they feel threatened. You know, they call the cops and say, I'm putting their lives in danger. You know, if I'm crying in public, people call the cops because they're afraid I might be dangerous. All right. So as far as the stuff that's going on out there, I'm going to put this out there and it's going to be ugly. You know, the stuff that is happening happened because George Floyd's death was caught on video. All right. And, you know, we get videos of this stuff all the time and all the time unfailingly there are people out there that have never had this stuff happen to them make all of these excuses all of this victim blaming well he was a criminal yeah but does that mean that he didn't deserve a trial you know well she should have just said what the cops said under what penalty of death in the street you know um, we get this whole, oh my God, we killed another black person ready book, um, from the press, you know, um, the cop was in fear of their lives, you know, oh, if the person had only listened, this person was a thug, you know, and I'm sorry to say that the double standard is sickening. And I know why people hide from it. Cause it's scary. It's gross and icky, you know, Tamir Rice was playing cops and robbers in the park with a toy gun. Sorry to tell you, black people have not been able to get business loans to start toy companies, so we don't make these toy guns. But cop fears for his life and he kills a child. No conviction, no arrest, still working for the police, you know. Now, again, for a lot of you guys that are new to the channel, um, I was in Las Vegas the night of the Las Vegas shooting couple of years ago happened at my mom's uh happened on my mom's birthday and we were doing a vegas street fair to help her sell her jewelry okay we were in town that day that dude shot a bunch of people still made it to the police station got booked stood trial okay michael brown Trayvon Martin, Philando Castillo. These guys never got arrested. Now, we're supposed to be in a country where we have rule under law, right? Where, where you know, everybody is there for, um, for law. But when you have one set of people who are never, ever, 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 so it seems, accountable to the laws that they enforce... And another set of people that get the death penalty for any slight mistake. What does that mean? You know, I'm tired. Hey, thank you, Mr. Mansfield. Um, I'm, I'm really tired. You know, um, George Floyd had the cop call, had the cops called on him for allegedly passing a fake $20 bill. There was no doubt in that store owner's mind that George Floyd wasn't saying or wasn't making a mistake. There was no thought in his mind that somebody else passed that $20 bill to George Floyd. No thought, none, zero. Okay, this guy suspects that this $20 bill is false and then he decided that George Floyd was trying to rob him. The idea of making a mistake cost a man his life because we're not allowed that margin of error. And you know what? This has been reflected in my personal life for years, especially as a gamer and as a game instructor. You know, just think about that. All right. If I make a mistake with the rules, I didn't make a mistake. I'm cheating. You know, and that is just on a tiny, tiny, tiny micro level. You know, I used to live in Orange County, California, one of the most dangerous places for people of my skin color. 
and even the people closest to me were assuming that I was trying to take advantage of people because after months of looking for a job, I couldn't get one, you know? And even when at least one place said in the presence of somebody who knew me that they would let the place burn to the ground before they hired an in bomb that's the world that we were living in but for some reason it was still on me you know it was it was still on me you know a college graduate who is articulate and i'll get to that in a minute you know couldn't actually find a job in a place known statistically for racism but those little things always make the person with my skin color the one wholly responsible for the circumstances under which they live. You know, there are too many people in this country that say black people need to make better choices. Better choices? I dare anybody, anybody, to grow up in a place that had no school funding, terrible roads, and a long-standing history of things being denied to them because that's where they grew up to make the same choices of people living off the wealth that was generated when their grandparents came back from war and were given Levittown housing. You know, there's so much going on in this country where people refuse to look at the context of history. It's like, it's like their heads are in the sand, okay? And there's a lot of silencing and stuff and a lot of this cultural and psychological war to not really look at what's going on, okay? Um, my girlfriend's mom decided to troll a freaking protest. I swear I could slap the crap out of her. You know, it's a good thing that I, I made a vow seven years ago to never be where she was, okay? That same spell that Odin cast, cast um, when it came to Freya. I mean, seriously, I just, I, I got tired, all right? And I'm hearing all these people asking, I don't know what the violence solves. What does the violence solve? Blah, blah, blah. Number one, the people are protesting because your protectors kill people without consequence far too regularly. Okay. Chris Rock has one of my favorite statements about this. You know, the press says, oh, well, cops overall are good. There's just a few bad apples, blah, blah, blah. That don't apply to pilots. Oh, most of our pilots are great, but some of them like flying in the mountains. <laughs> and the fact that even questioning whether or not the person that I'm in front of is one of these bad people is cause for shoving me to the ground and putting handcuffs on me. You know, and a lot of people ask, what is the violence song? You know, what, what, what? Well, yeah, go ahead and steal it. I did. Like I said, you know, you don't you don't have that. Well, you know, some of our pilots just like crashing in the mountains, but most of our pilots land great. I'm sorry to tell you, somebody dies at any other job, construction, firemen, airplane pilots, truckers. <laughs> OK, those people lose their jobs. Somebody had the gall to question me today because I want police officers to lose their right to practice law enforcement when they are um, when they are um, sued and either settle or convicted of excessive force in the same way that a doctor loses their license when they're sued for malpractice. And a dude was like, well, I don't I don't exactly know what you mean by that. And I'm like, I am not here to argue with you, Mr. Middle Class Dude that argues against everything that helps people. Okay, and I'm sick and tired, sick and tired of people on the right saying they want small government and not stating what they want the government to do. What do you think it's there for? I mean, seriously, I get not liking where our tax dollars go. Every time somebody says, well, I don't want to go into welfare because people are blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you think that mother of four kids in Kentucky deserves to starve because you saw one or two people taking advantage of the system? 
And I'm sorry to tell you this, I don't like that my tax dollars go to paying the police. I don't like that my tax dollars go to perpetual war in the Middle East. And I don't have a say in that. I don't, I, I really don't. And yet these people are saying that they want more law and order, okay? And as far as like protesting peacefully, I'm sorry to tell you, we said hands up, don't shoot. You called us barbarians, violent, and thugs. We wore shirts that said we can't breathe for Michael Brown. And you guys, you guys are the ones that said we should shut up and dribble. We talked about stuff at the Oscars and y'all said actors don't have the right to spew their political opinions. We talked about stuff with the press and y'all said, shut up. We knelt quietly when it came to singing the national anthem for the country that put us here against our will and has treat us like crap over the course of us being here from slavery to reconstruction to freaking people having picnics under lynched bodies to Jim Crow to redlining to the drug war and we knelt quietly and yo girl yo girl that waste of human flesh called Tommy Loren said, and I quote, I respect your First Amendment right to say what you said. Now I'm using my First Amendment right to tell you to shut up. Using your rights to rob us of ours. We marched peacefully and we were labeled terrorists and then y'all have the gall not you guys watching but y'all know who i'm talking about y'all have the gall to tell us about martin luther king you know number one that's a screw up on your part Yo part, you see, we don't control the education system. And yeah, there's a Black History Month every year. And I will tell you as somebody that came through the public school system, I learned nothing in Black History Month except for Frederick Douglass, Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, the one thing that y'all say she did, oh, and Jesse Jackson, because he ran for president. Okay, I, I, I want to put I, I want to put that out there. I said, since we don't control that narrative, we learn what y'all let us learn. Now I'm gonna show you guys something. Okay, um, I'm pulling up Bloody Sunday in Selma. Okay, y'all want to talk about? Why don't y'all march like Martin Luther King? Why don't y'all be all nonviolent and have y'all sit-ins? Newsflash. When we do have our nonviolent protest, y'all hit us with tear gas. Tear gas, fire hoses, dogs. See, all these people trying to talk about Martin Luther King, all these people, they're forgetting that yeah, we did march quietly. And when we marched quietly, we were attacked in the same way that you guys have been watching footage all week of police doing stuff on Twitter. It has been 60 years. The same stuff is happening and people are still denying it. Still, okay, they're still denying that this stuff happens. And, I, 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 and I'm like, okay, Y'all are denying it, and y'all ain't saying why. You know? Now again, I'm normally here. I'm normally here trying to teach people how to play D&D and, and Mage the Ascension and Vampire the Masquerade and Midnight and, 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 and freaking Rips and Paranoia, <laughs> okay? I don't like feeling like this. I specifically, I, I specifically did everything I could to not talk about politics and to not talk about the state of the world as it stands, okay? I hate that I gotta go off like this. I hate it. 
okay? I, I started this channel because I like Avatar The Last Airbender, and I like, like, anime up until the early 1990s, and I like playing d and I like rolling dice. I mean, I freaking give these away to my freaking patrons, okay? It's a dice roller that looks like an angel. That's what I'm normally here for. But over the past week, I've had so many people come to me saying, I don't understand. Now I'm gonna say this, all right? There's a lot of people that are out there saying, well, I don't condone violence. It ain't for you to condone, number one, okay? That is a soft racism that says these people can protest in a way that I approve of, and if they don't, they're wrong. Screw their message. Their methodology makes me ignore it. How arrogant. How self-centered. You know, that's not cool. Okay, and I'm sorry to tell you. As I said, on one of the first episodes of Dark Side of the Room, I got pictures. I was there in 92. I was on the ground during the Rodney King riots. Okay, I was. I was there. Okay, 15 years old. Why? They started at my aunt's house on 71st in Normandy. And if y'all are gonna, hey, get, get the hell away from your keyboard. Florence is 72nd Street. The argument started in front of her house. Reginald Denny was the next stop. Okay? That was my neighborhood. That was my city that got burned to the ground. And I watched with glee. And that was started because two, two forms of violence were caught on film and all five people involved were not punished. But if they say we match the description, we go to jail. You know, we are terrorized. People that have my skin color are terrorized by the police. Okay, let me explain to you one way. Um, because a lot of people on the right, a lot, of, a lot of white people in this country talk about the crime rate. Let's talk about the crime rate. Every time you get a ticket, you have to show up to court. Every time you show up to court, if the judge doesn't throw it out and you have to pay a fine, that counts as a light conviction on one level. Okay, now these police that are out there that may not put their knees on our neck or put 15 bullets in us for grabbing our phone or five bullets in us for pulling out the identification card that they just requested. They give us tickets for everything. Jaywalking, ticket, show up to court. Okay. Um, I say you ran a red light. Ticket, show up to court. I say you ran a stop sign. Ticket, show up to court. Show up to court, show up to court, show up to court, show up to court. What y'all don't know is even when the judge throws out the case, just showing up costs $100 in court fees. Now, if you are in a place where people are already struggling financially, if they win, they're out of $100 per ticket. And if they don't pay the ticket, then they have a warrant. And if they get a warrant to appear in court, they are arrested. And over the course of that arrest, all it takes is for that cop to say they were resisting or I fear for my life. And that person is dead. Dead. That, that child no longer has a father or a mother. That mother no longer has a son or a daughter or a sister or a brother. Okay, stack upon stack upon stack upon stack of all these little fences. And you see, I get it. I get it. I get why people um, say these dismissive things like they should have just obeyed. They should have just done this. They should have just. I get that you were comparing what would happen to you with what happens to me. But you really need to open your ears and understand that we are looked at differently. Okay, I'm sure it, some of you guys, hopefully enough of you guys, have actually read the article of the college professor that was on his lunch break. And when the police officer came out to him and questioned where he was because he fit the description, 
his faculty ID at the university wasn't enough. His driver's license wasn't enough. He still got interrogated on the street. And this was a dude that did everything that America says an American should do. I just want you to think about that for just a minute. I say all the time, I'm held to a standard where I have to perform at 116% efficiency and efficacy or else I'm treated as though I'm trying to sabotage things. How many forms of ID do you have to show? You know, a lot of you guys live in a world where the default answer is I'll try or flat out yes. But in this country, if you look like me, the default answer is no and prove it. Just prove it. Okay? I'm a very educated man. I'm qualified to be a college professor. I really am. But I don't have the leniency of being around people in public because any accusation toward me is acted upon as though it's true and I did it with malicious intent. I have no margin of error. If I get a rule to a game wrong, I'm not mistaken, I'm trying to cheat. George Floyd passed a 20. And here's the irony, okay? Y'all wanna know why there's rioting in the streets? Look it up yourself. The 20 was tested post-mortem, it was real. This guy lost his life because someone decided that he was committing a crime with malice of forethought. And now he's dead. Okay, two days ago, my city did some cute stuff. They decided to set a curfew to save people's property from the protest and the looters. They set the curfew at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. They sent the announcement of the 1 p.m. curfew at 1.26 p.m. Now, for those of you guys that were here earlier this week, I didn't do my normal show on Tuesday. Excuse me. Because I, um... I got called into my day job at the logistics company, and we've been shipping PPE to um, um, drugstores and hospitals. We've shipped out over 1.6 million units over the past couple of weeks, okay? Because we're still in this whole global pandemic thing. You know, the Rona ain't gone nowhere, nowhere. Wow, some people are leaving late, all right? And I was scared to death. I was convinced that there was a 78% chance that I wasn't going to be alive on Wednesday. And I came to a quiet peace about that. Okay, I came to a very quiet peace knowing that when my girlfriend, she's white, was driving me home, all it took was one cop to decide we were worth pulling over and to come up with some reason to beat me to death or arrest me for being out past curfew without my papers to prove that I'm supposed to be there. And I want all of you guys watching this show today to realize something, okay? To not fall for all the stuff that you're seeing on Twitter and, and the news, especially Fox. All these arrests and all that stuff. I'm sorry to tell you, we're still in a global pandemic and the courts are closed. These people being arrested for protesting, they're not seeing trial. They're not seeing a judge. Just think about that. Because the courts are closed because of the need for social distancing. <laughs> You know, yeah, that's right, Rogue. <laughs> that's totally right, Rogue. Like, going to jail can give you corona. You know, because, again, of all, all, all this stuff. But, yeah, again, um, Trevor Noah said it great last week when he talked about these domino effects. 
And there's a lot of dominoes that have been lined up in this culture. Okay? In this culture. That's great. Yeah, we... Um, thanks, St. Widow. But yeah, L.A. County is getting sued over curfews when the courts go back in. But here's the funny thing about that. And I, I really need to point this out. Um, due process pretty much puts us in this place of the police do something terrible. You're supposed to go along with it. Then you fight them in court and then you win. But what if you never make it to court? Hmm? Just just think about that. Because that's something I got to think about. You know, I'm not saying, I'm, I'm not saying that, um, that all cops are bastards. I'm not. I believe it, but I'm not saying it. What I am saying is this. If there are amazing police officers out there hell if these terrible cops are only one in 36 talk to any fashion person psychologist or anthropologist the purpose of a uniform is to release distinction of individuality so i have friends that are law enforcement officers and they're pretty good but they're the only ones that I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that won't fear for their lives and fill me or my kids full of bullets. You know, just think about that. I had a run in with the police about a year ago and one of them, a black one that supposedly grew up in my same neighborhood, tried giving me the third degree. <laughs> tried asking, well, if you, uh, you know, um, well, what? You think that all cops are out to get you and blah, 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 blah? You need to stop watching so much news, end quote. And I said, I don't believe that all cops are terrible. I just don't have any indications as to which ones the bad ones are. I don't know if it's you or him or him or him, because you guys are all police officers and y'all wear uniforms. And then, of course, he challenged, well, who have you seen personally be, be be shot to death by police officers? I'm like, I can give you 14 names that I've seen with my own eyes get riddled with bullets by police officers. And of course, he just kept trying to goad me after telling me to stop watching so much news and stop putting him in danger because he got called to the house during an argument with my girlfriend and well you know a cop's job is dangerous and i quote what am i supposed to do get another job <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm sorry but as soon as a firefighter becomes pyrophobic <laughs> they go somewhere else <laughs> i mean i'm sorry <laughs> if i was a doctor and i was afraid of blood I'd go into, oh, I don't know, maybe water sports. <laughs> you know, I'd be a lifeguard. Yeah, that 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 that's something that doesn't show a whole lot of blood. I, I first thought carpentry and then, you know. But yeah, I mean, seriously, seriously, you know. But we live in a world, we live in a country right now where people have to be taught how to interact with public servants to keep them calm just think about that okay it's not just straight up respect yes sir no sir yes ma'am no ma'am it's not just that it's if you don't treat these public servants with reverence they may kill you that's the talk when y'all or watching other stuff and you hear black people talk about the talk. We're not talking about the birds and the bees. Okay. We're not talking about this is where babies come from. And it's got nothing to do with a stork. No, 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 no. No, we're not talking about that. We talk about the ways that we have to interact with police officers to not give them an excuse to kill us where we stand just in case. If this is what you had to tell your son. Not at a certain age, but at a certain height. 
All right, just, 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 I, I want you to think about that for just a minute. The moment they become five, two and a half, they go from being a cute little kid to a threat. That's our lives. And this is the culture that's been fostered in this country, you know? And don't get me started on what trans black people have to go to, go through, you know? I mean, trans people are even more vulnerable than black men and black women. They're more so because they deviate from the norm that Rockwell put forth. You know, people are out there marching in the middle of Pride Month to say these people need to stop. All right. By the way, Quinjin, thank you for the hundred bits. Don't don't think I didn't notice. You know, I mean, seriously, seriously speaking, um, there's so many people out there today that are asking, what does the violence solve? And it's like, well, when we asked quietly, we were called terrorists, we were ignored, you know, again, Black Lives Matter was met with a new slogan, all lives matter, just to keep people from pointing out, one, the organization named Black Lives Matter <laughs> that's trying to get police to be held accountable for the stuff that they do. And all of these false, false things, like, well, there was a white guy that was beaten by cops and no one cared. And I'm like, you know what? If y'all got together, film that stuff, or you're showing a picture of a white dude beaten half to death in the hospital march get out there and join us you know if y'all got out there and marched i promise we would show up you know but one of the things in this country that has had me on freaking edge that's got me so thin and stretched is that whenever whenever People that look like me do anything to improve circumstances for themselves. We're expected to drag everybody else along. I can't say stop killing me. I gotta say stop killing us. You know, I can't talk about how the police look at me like I'm a monster. Like I was born wrong and my entire purpose for being alive is to hurt them and rape their women. I have to talk about how police are overreaching in the face of everyone. I have to include all the people that have never stood up for me. I have to include all of the people that would call the police on me as soon as a white woman screams about anything. And I'm not exaggerating. If I'm in a public park and I'm walking by the parking lot to go across the street to the store and buy a soda and a white woman slams her hand in her own car and screams, someone can call the cops and tell them that I'm hurting that lady. It happened in Northridge. But I digress. I rant a lot, I'm sorry. Like I said, I try and keep that away from this channel. But I said, all right, fine, I'm talking about this, okay? Because I am, I have to talk about this. Because there are too many people out there that are woefully ignorant, too many people out there trying to stop the conversation. There are too many people out there that are determined to separate black people, African Americans, and only focus on the African part. And this is a historic thing, okay? I talk to my girlfriend a lot and I tell her that all of this comes down, all struggle in the United States from the beginning to now, from the civil rights movement to abolition of slavery, to fighting for um, the right to vote, be it black people or suffragettes, um, be it reproductive rights, be it all this stuff. It is a fundamental fight for personhood. It is a fight to be recognized as a human being with agency. You know, that that's 
that's what this is about. That's what all this unrest on the streets are about. It's about people that have been denied personhood saying that we're supposed to be people. And you say that we're people, but you don't treat us like we're people, okay? You really don't. How can I say this? How can I be so broad stroking? I will tell you how. I'm gonna show you guys this. Y'all remember this from last week? I dare you to read the comment sections on anything talking about um, what's her name, Cooper. And ask yourself, while she is putting on an act that could potentially get this black man killed, why are there more people talking about how she's choking the dog? The dog that she is pulling around. I'm not saying that, that she should be treating the dog that way. But what I am saying is when we're talking about the conversation or and when we're in a conversation about how her actions could have gotten Mr. Cooper killed for him asking her to adhere to the rules of the park. Again, a few days later, dude was killed for accidentally possibly passing a $20 bill that wasn't actually counterfeit, but she was breaking a posted rule. He asked her to adhere to it and she threatened him by calling the police, which could have resulted in Philando Castile, Mike Brown, um, Tamir Rice, Sandra Bland, and people gave massive outcry about how she was flinging the dog around in the conversation about how she almost got a black dude possibly killed. I'm not saying they shouldn't talk about the dog. I'm saying start a different conversation. And this is one of the things that has me so on edge. There are way too many people, way too many people out there in social media that love dominating the conversation. Love it. Okay. And here's the thing. Everybody's got their own page. I got a Facebook page. This company has a Facebook page. You have a Facebook page. You have a Facebook page. You got a page and you got a page and you got a page and you got a Twitter and you got a Twitter and you got a Twitter. State your opinion on your Twitter. It's that simple. And unless you're willing to get into an actual good faith debate, a debate that is that has the purpose of either teaching something and learning something, then shut up on someone else's page. <laughs> because anything else is an act of trying to silence someone, i.e. I'm using my First Amendment right to tell you to shut up. Just think about that, you know, and I get it. I get it. You know, I want it to, um, like I could talk about this thing called white privilege all day, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I know a lot of people hate the phrase and frankly, I don't have it in me to debate that today. White privilege comes down to this. Think about how bad your life sucks it. Your life sucks. Would it be better if you were black? Would your job improve if you were black? Would you have a better house if you were black? Would your credit score be higher if you were black? Would you be in less debt if you were black? If the answer to that is, well, no, then you have white privilege. Sorry, that's it. There is no discussion past that. Okay, sorry to tell you. <laughs> All right. Um, now let's take a look at this. Okay, this right here is a hierarchy of what racism is, and this, this right here, this is the stuff that people agree. Okay, lynching, hate crimes, blackface, the N word, swastikas, neo Nazis, burning crosses, racist jokes, racist slurs, and the Klan. 
That is what people who don't experience racism call real racism. Now, let me tell you the stuff that does harm. Okay, the stuff that is racism. Now, the old dictionary definition of the word implied intent. And I get that. But here's the thing. Just because the dictionary had the definition, that does not mean that it was a complete understanding. If that were the case, we'd all still be speaking Elizabethan. Hell, we'd all still be um, speaking Latin. Latin! You know? However, these are all the things that we live, live with daily. Calling the cops on black people, white silence, color blindness. I don't see color. Um, forgetting that there are police officers and supremacists and loan officers and landlords that do. Uh, white parents self-segregating neighborhoods and schools. Oh, yeah. Eurocentric curriculum. Again, um, without Googling, without Googling, name four black people involved in the civil rights movement in an important way. Hell, name three that weren't Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Rosa Parks. Just name three that aren't those three, okay? And all of y'all had at least, at least 10 Black History Months. <coughs> you know, racist mascots, not believing the experience of, pe of people of color. That is one that has made me stick my fist through the walls. If one more white person tells me that it's not because I'm black, I'm done. Because that's them telling me that I am not cognizant enough to recognize what's happening in my life. You know, but according to them, unless it's lynching, a hate crime, the N-bomb gets, gets dropped, or... I'm nailed to a cross after being lynched that's on fire in their front yard where they can see it, then it's not real racism. I can make one of these charts for sexism too and homophobia and trans stuff, okay? The world is a lot more complex than we say it is. A lot more complex than we think that it is. And I get that our education system has failed us, okay? I will state that right out there. Okay, because our education system has failed us. We are not, not educated very well. Okay, we're really not. We're not educated very well. But as adults, we have a responsibility to become educated, especially since we have this glorious invention called the internet. I love this thing. Okay, love it. I truly, truly loved, um... Love the, um, um, I, I, I love the internet. Okay. Someone's asking me to whip up a new, or to recite their new Pledge of Allegiance. Um, one planet under a loving God individual with food and shelter and health care for all. I'm down, Avi. Okay. I really am. <laughs> um, you know, um, <clears throat> you know. I can't say the whole thing because I don't take pledges. Um, it, it's a very, very big thing. By the way, major shout out to His Majesty Paul Mansfield for reporting those bots that were spamming us. Um, uh, I'll, um, I will post this in Deckers on the Book on Facebook, all right? That's, that's what I'll do on that. But yeah, um... So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's going on in this. And as adults with the internet, it's up to us individually to become educated, okay, to read the histories. You know, I was shocked. I was shocked, but actually, no, I wasn't. I wasn't surprised. I was just appalled when The Watchmen came out on HBO and it opened with the Greenwood Massacre. And so many people were like, you, you could see it out there. So many people were like, oh my God, I can't believe the race baiting and opening up with this fictional thing. And then people were like, no, that's history. That actually happened. What? 
Sorry, I'm looking around the studio. I don't have any any pearls to clutch. What? No! That could not have possibly happened! Yeah, it did. And you know what? It happened again in 1987 in West Philadelphia. I mean, seriously, that really happened. <laughs> you know, black people get bombed by authority and nobody finds out about it. But yeah, 1987, West Philadelphia. I'm not saying that's why the Fresh Prince went to Bel Air, but didn't hurt. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Um, so seriously, you know, this is stuff that's been happening. And if people want to hide behind, I'm a good person, whatever. I don't care if you're a good person. I'm asking you to do better things. The number one thing that we are out here so the number one thing that Back on the Deck is here for is to help people do better things, okay? Now, we do it by ways of escapism. Make no mistake, you know, but we write our characters. We play our characters, okay? that That's the stuff that we do. We create games. We foster environments so that people can do better. Just, just do a little better. When I was a martial arts instructor, and it was stretching time. Yep. Uh, sorry, sorry about that, St. Widow. But yeah, uh, go ahead. Google it. West Philadelphia in the 80s. <laughs> I was alive and well and Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was in development. Just think about that. Uh, <laughs> 85 or 87. Okay. Again, I've lived through so much of this stuff. It just becomes a blur. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so... Um, what, where was I? Where was I on this? Oh yeah, yeah. So this stuff happens and we can get educated. I let people know, um, I let people know that it is tiring. Always trying to educate people on where I come from and why they should listen. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I said 85. It was 87. I was mistaken. <laughs> You know, thank you, Roguelike, for pointing that out, saying, yeah, no, it, it, it was 1985. Yeah, you know, ah, just before you were born. Yeah, I was, um, I was eight. I was eight years old uh, when it happened. Um, yeah, oh, it is 85. Like I said, all this stuff blurs. I've lived through a lot of terrible history, you know, and sometimes I make a mistake, but yeah, <laughs> um, and um, the fact of the matter is that we can get educated. Now, I don't like just ranting and raving into the wind. And I've been here for what, 112, 113 minutes? I don't know. So here's some of the stuff that you can do. All right. If you guys are out there going, yeah, but I don't know what to do. I feel powerless. It's overwhelming. Boy, I get you. I totally get you. All right. So I got some suggestions. <clears throat> Number one, if you are over 18, Call up and write letters to your city councilman and your sheriff. You know, take care of stuff on your local level. Show up to city councils. And if you guys are well-versed enough to look up the last thing that your friend said that you thought was total BS, then you have the wherewithal to look up your local judges. Check their records. Check for bias. Okay? I know there's an app for that. You know, check for the bias in their sentencing and then vote them out. You know, there's an election every two years, two years. And here's why this is important. There are people out there that waves Confederate flags, that hold AR-15s at the governor's office that don't get tear gassed. Those people vote. They're the ones that show up. Okay. Um, your uncle <laughs> your racist uncle that we don't talk about at the at the at the um at the Thanksgiving table. Half of my family's white, by the way. Um, so I know I got that one. <laughs> all right, roguelike, cool. So you're in your forties too. So you get what I'm talking about. And I want to thank you for all the participation. You've been a rock star on this one. Um uh, those people vote. Those people are the ones that call the cops. 
you know? Um, God, Vixen is just like, you get a sub, and you get a sub, and you get a sub, you know? Um, if you're 18 or over, show up at the city councils, challenge these people, because voting, if nothing else, is our way of saying, you haven't been doing what we've wanted you to do, so you're fired, you know? And given what's in the White House right now, I can't wait till November so I can go, you're fired. You're fired. That's a, no, everybody, no, no. I, I, I'm hearing it from certain people. Certain people, people all the time, they tell me, they tell me that I'm fired. <laughs> okay, thanks, roguelike. Um, you know, that's the whole thing. You know, I'm not going to tell you who to vote for and all that other stuff, but I will say this. Um... The populace of the United States have two major things, two major weapons in their arsenal. We've got the ballot box and we've got the protest. Riot. Um, I'm not condoning rioting, okay? But a protest has its power because of the presumption of riot. I will tell you, there's a lot of people that I talk to on a very regular basis. And I know a lot of Billy Badasses, <clears throat> a whole lot of Billy Badasses that are going, oh, oh no, look at me. I'm blah, blah, blah. I was talking to somebody a couple of weeks ago that was bragging about how during the LA riots, he and his friends drove a truck through a stereo shop and stole a bunch of stuff, you know, Billy Badass. Okay, cool. Um, but when people talk to me about being an alpha, I'm an alpha. Sorry to tell you, I'm not an alpha because I am a human being and we are herd animals. Sorry to tell you, we operate in herds, in big herds. How do I know? When was the last time you saw a wolf stampede? Hmm? You know, but turn on the news and you will see a human stampede. Every protest and riot is a stampeding herd. And I'm part of the group. At least I'm fighting <clears throat> to be considered part of the group. Now, I'm not out there holding protest signs because I'm six foot four, almost as dark as Wesley Snipes, and I've got blue dreadlocks. So as soon as those tear gas canisters start going out, guess who they're aiming for? And I can't do anybody any good having the crap kicked out of me. <laughs> wow. Let's see. Who's there now? Oh, Miracle of Minimum Wage. Miss you. Um, I can't do anybody any good um, with broken legs and broken, you know, broken jaw bones and stuff like that. Especially, especially since I don't have medical insurance. So I'm the guy in the chair. <laughs> okay. So I'm saying show up to city council meetings, every single one that you can make it to and tell them that we are unhappy with the way that the police are acting. We are unhappy with these particular laws and mandates. We are unhappy that there is no renter's insurance. We are unhappy that in a time of global pandemic, people are losing their jobs and their landlords are not forgiving rent. They're just pushing it back for three or four months so that after all this is done, these people who lost their jobs are responsible for four times the amount of rent that they didn't pay before. What the hell? <laughs> you know, <clears throat> that's what you can do. If you have family members that own property, you get them on the side and start doing that. You know, make the phone calls, you know, flood your city council members and your state congressman, not the one that represents you or your state senator, not the one that represents us in Washington, but the ones that represent your state and come up with laws for your state. Like I said, I'm here in California. It wasn't Washington that made pot legal. It was our state system. Call those people up. Flood them with calls. Flood them. Just be like, I don't like this. Fix it or you're fired. I don't like this. Fix it or you're fired. Talk to them like your bosses talk to you because they're paid with our tax dollars. We're signing their paychecks. We put, we give them the job. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. We can talk about kettling one-on-one -on -one, rogue. Um, look it up guys. Like I said, internet, um, sole conglomeration of all written human knowledge in one place, you know, um, but yeah, you know, that's what we can do. We can call them up and push for legislative change. I got mad at someone. Yeah. Where's Karen when we need her? Karen's part of the problem. All right. I'm asking for Carol. 
Carol is the one who slaps Karen and tells her to shut up, you know, and not Carol Baskin. You know, we're not looking for her because you know, y'all can have her. But, um, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, so we need to get out there. You know, if y'all know any veterans, y'all get the veterans out there and be like, as a veteran of the United States, this needs to change because this is not what I fought for. You know, when the veterans stand up and say these cops get fewer consequences than we do in a demilitarized zone with people actually trying to kill us, there's got to be something out there. You know, someone had the nerve to tell me that it would never happen, uh, that it would never happen because... One of my personal demands is I want these um I want these excessive force um, lawsuits and settlements paid for out of the pension fund from the police union. That's what I want. And why do I want that? Simple. If the bad cops, <laughs> if the bad cops had to pay for their stuff with the future of the good cops, no, oh, with the future of, of other bad cops. <laughs> You know, they would be like, hey, knock that off. I got to put my girl through college. <laughs> you know, I got to put my son, you know, I got to help my son pay for military. Yeah, that's what I'm talking. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, like I said, I don't talk about a lot of race stuff on the militant. Let's get signs and all that stuff. But I learned something when I was a young man. And that is the two places to hit an American. Well, the one place to hit an American is in the pocketbook. And white folks love paper. <laughs> Send letters, make phone calls, make demands, and make those threats with, if you don't take any real action behind this, you lose my vote and the vote of my entire family. You know, especially, and do the same with the congressperson in your district. You know, the one that actually represents us in Washington, okay? I know our system is broken and I know almost more than anyone that I know that it seems hopeless, but we have power, we have tools, and a lot of us have been taught to fear the tools that we have or to use the tools that we have to push down someone else to make ourselves seem taller, okay? We need to use our tools for what they are intended for. Get out there, guys. Vote. Harass your Congress people. And when I say vote, seriously, vote on that local level. Kick out these judges that keep dismissing cases. Kick out these DAs that allow police to test a lie. And guess what? Your county sheriff is, a, is an elected position. You know, fire those people. Get them out. Be like, nope, that's it. <laughs> out. You know, you didn't fire these police officers that shot people in the face with tear gas can, um, canisters. You're out. You know, you didn't fire the people that removed this person's right to trial by killing them on the street. You're fired. And if you want to give excuses that, well, a cop's job is dangerous and, and it's rough out there in them streets, I just want you to consider what it must be like to live out in those streets without the arsenal of weapons, um, the power of the court, and the strength of public perception behind you that all the people that live in these places have. You want to talk about how dangerous it is to be a cop? Let me tell you how dangerous it is to be a kid in these areas. You know, that's what I'm talking about. You know. So use your power and use your power with empathy toward who is hurting. Not with empathy toward who hurts them. So, that was my rant. I've been here for close to about an hour and a half, <laughs> okay? But I had to get this out because I'm tired of typing it. I'm tired of seeing the videos. I'm tired of people saying, well, we don't know what happened before they started the tape. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm tired of all those people. I'm sick of it, okay? I, I'm, 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 I just, I can't do it. I want to do it. I want to do it. But I have been fighting this fight for 
31 years, okay? 31 years from the death of Latasha Harlan to present. You know, I'm tired. I'm very tired. And none of us should have to fight this, but I'm not gonna hand the baton off to the generation behind me. I'm not handing it off to the millennials. But what I am saying is we need some backup. Come on and join. Okay, with this going on today, with, with the stuff that's gone on in the past three weeks, this is my second one. This is my second um, global, and yes, it's happening over all 50 states. This is my second time the planet had to start protesting to tell the United States to get its cops in line. Second time in my life. It's my mother's third. She was there for Watts in 61. Okay, how much more is it gonna take? I'll tell you how much more. Until those that are not affected by this stuff on a daily basis, okay? And I say this like this. If you don't have to consider how what you wear can get you killed or what language you speak can determine whether or not you or your children make it home from work or school, then you have the power to change this, even more so than those of us who have to consider these things. Just look at history, okay? My people have been fighting for this for 60 years on film. And after 60 years, we've not managed to get the muscle together to fix it. That means we need help. Okay? We need your help. We need the help of that quiet majority that keeps saying, this stuff is terrible. Something needs to be done. Vote on our behalf. It might not benefit you right now, but I promise you this. The more black children are killed and manhandled by the police without consequences, the longer they get to do that, the closer the day comes when they're coming after your kids. If, you know, the, long, the more cops that get to be afraid for their lives, so they release eight to nine clips into unarmed people in their own backyards. <laughs> the more they get away with that with our people, how long until they come for yours? This might benefit us by the time I shuffle off this mortal coil and I might be able to tell my grandkids about it, okay? But if you guys go out there and empathize with what's actually going on, screw the business owners. And this is coming from a business owner, okay? Windows can be fixed. Children can't be resurrected. Stock can be replenished and ridden off by tax dollars. Dads can't. Moms can't be resurrected. Dads can't be resurrected. You know, Target said that we can replace our stuff and give people their jobs back. But George Floyd's wife will never get her husband back. His mother should not have had to see him again. For the record, she she passed a long time ago. You know. And if he had any kids, they're not getting their dad back. And no matter what you guys see on your social media about the violence and all that other stuff, there's been this great meme that's out there saying, you know, if a few bad apples and looters can kill an entire protest then how many bad apples does it take to ruin the police? You know, never forget why, pe why people are out there marching. Okay, there is an article <coughs> out there and you guys can search for it. I'm going to see if I can find it real quick. Um, called the six freedoms that black people are fighting for. Okay, and this is, this is important. Um, Six Freedoms Articles. Um, do, 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 the Six Freedoms. Um, black people 
don't have, okay? And I say this to a lot of, I say this to a lot of my friends, especially my friends in the, in the LGBT community, who's actually kind of got it more right than almost anyone else. My people, black people, we are the canaries in the coal mine, okay? Y'all want to know how to win your fight for your rights? Look at us. <laughs> Use the stuff that we did and understand that there are people out there that are going to try and stop you. <laughs> um, um, yeah, just, just understand that. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Found it. It's from, um... Yeah, here we go. That's, uh... Afro's... Afro's Appiophile. Okay? Oh, uh, yeah. Afro'sAppiophile.com And it's the six freedoms that black people do not have under white supremacy. Um... And if y'all take a look at all six of these things... Okay, you'll see that we're all fighting for the same thing, whether you're a woman, um, whether you're disabled or neurodivergent or LGBTQ, you know, we want the freedom of emotion, the freedom to feel the freedom of space and our appearance, um, the freedom of memory, you know, we're not allowed to remember. We're not allowed to say, hey, this happened. We always get it's a long time ago, blah, blah, blah. You know, freedom to recover from the traumas that we suffer. And we need that freedom because we don't have it. The moment we start to try and recover, something else happens. The freedom of self-defense, the freedom to stand up for ourselves and say, hey, stop hurting me. And of course, the freedom to protect the other five. You know, if you are part of disenfranchised humans, those are the six things that you're fighting for, too. You know, if you need to know about that freedom of space and appearance, I'm going to I'm going to tell you this. I was talking to someone the other day and I let them know that there is some stuff that I'm expected to allow to allow to fly. And I let them know that I, I don't. And I'm called terrible for it. Now, uh, this is me with my hair down. Yep. I'm so sexy and intellectual. All right. And when I'm in public, people go, oh, my God, I love your hair. And they reach out to touch my hair. And I take a step back and I tell them, if you touch my hair, I'm grabbing your tits. Pardon my language. OK, you grab my hair, I grab your boobs. You grab my hair, I grab your crotch. And I got no problem taking a handful of scrotum. I really don't. OK. And people are like, oh my God, why are you even? And I'm like, look, if you think you have the right to reach out to touch me without my consent, I'll take that right myself. You know, I mean, and yes, it does happen a lot. And it happens with our kids. Your daughter's hair is so nice. And then they reach out and touch it. You know, just think about that as it relates to a declaration of personhood. You know, j just think about that. Yeah, it is rude. It's like rude. No, that is that is beyond rude. Because it comes from this underlying thing of saying you are not safe in who you are. <laughs> right? It is creepy. And it's um, y'all don't have to take my word for it. Ask any black person you've ever met whether or not you're friends. OK, if we wear our hair in an afro. Oh, my God, your afro is so move your hand or I'm cutting it. You know, um, <laughs> you know, oh, my God, your hair is so and then they reach out and they grab it. And I'm like, if you reach out and touch me, I will reach out and touch you. And I realize I'm saying that under the threat that they might call the police and say that I groped them. <laughs> Just think about that. <laughs> oh, my God, this big black guy came out and he touched my breast. And then hands on the back, knees on the neck. That's what happens. But they can reach out and touch me anytime they want. That ain't equality, nor is that equity. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. The, these are the things. You, know, you guys can look it up at um, Afro, uh, Afro Sapiophile. That's A-F-R-O-S-A-P-I-O 
P-H-I-L-E dot com and look for six freedoms black people don't have under white supremacy. Okay. Like I said, just, just, yeah. Check it out here. Boom. There it is. Drink it in. <laughs> right? <laughs> you are a Sofa King super, you know? Yeah. This ain't no pet and zoo. I ain't no animal. You know, I'm a human being. And so are my children. My daughter is half white. So she's got beautiful hair. Beautiful. But people thinking that they could just walk up to her when she was a kid and go, oh my God, I love your hair so much. Reach root. And I'm like, nah, you do that. And I swear to God, I'm going to grab you. You know? Oh, well, you don't have the right to threaten me. And you don't have the right to grope my children. But in practice, this country's given them that right. And this is the stuff that we need your help with to make not okay. You know, again, um, Bug the city council, vote out the sheriffs, vote out the judges, tell your mayor if they don't clean up the police force, they are fired. And we will continue to fire every single mayor until, until we find one that'll fix the problem. We've got that right. You know, that's the power that we have, but it's also the power of the majority. So all of you guys out there, and I'm talking to you, white America, if you feel powerless and overwhelmed, this is how you can help. You know, not arguing over Facebook, hashtags help, but it needs to be more than that. You know, yell at your city council person. <laughs> you know, yell at your state senator, yell at your federally, at, at your at your senator that represents your, your state in Washington, yell at your mayors. And make it very clear, if they don't clear this up, they're fired. That's what voting is. We will give the job to someone who will do this better than you. And this requires a little research on your part. Again, find out about these judges. I know it seems overwhelming, but two Google searches. Judge, um, judges in my area, add your address and then pick a name and Google their records. <laughs> you know, you can do it on the toilet. You can do it in the morning when you look into your rectangle of despair that tells you that everybody has their crap together instead of you. <laughs> um, you know, you can do it while you're standing in line trying to get into said Target or Costco or something because they're doing social distancing. You know, <laughs> that's what you can do. If you guys got any other questions or comments, um, feel free, feel absolutely free to send us an email at backinthedeck at gmail.com. Uh, the address is right here. It's been scrolling under everything. Um, <laughs> you're welcome. I try and be friendly. Um, you know, uh, look us up on Twitter. Look us up on all those things. Um, if you guys need another link to that article, um, let me see if I can pull this up here and I will make it big, make it big. Here we are. Um, I will put the link in Deckers on the book on Facebook. So go to Facebook, join Deckers on the book, check out the freedoms article and, um, you know, hit us up on all the social media platforms. You can also Reach out to us on the Instagram um, and on the YouTube and all the other stuff that's there. But this is the last political rant that I want to do for a long time. It has been seven years since I started back in the deck. And this is only my second one. I don't want to do another one soon. So hit us up on the Patreon and the YouTube and the Instagram and, you know, donate if you can. Thank you. Thank you very much for the big donation that came in earlier. You have no idea how much that helps because we just got equipment that will allow us to make short films, which we're going to start doing as soon as the curfews stop and I can get out there and start filming again. Um, but yeah, and I want to thank you guys for all that. Now, for you guys that are sticking around and you're not tabletop or live action or RPG players stick around anyway you might actually find out you might like it but if you guys are nerds and geeks and outcasts and all that stuff and if anybody makes you feel like you're not welcome 
because of the circumstances of your birth, be it race, religion, creed, your gender identity, your sexual orientation, your disabilities, or even your budget, you tell them to take any of those cards they pull on you and put them back in the deck. All right, this is Solar Gray. Ah, oh, yeah, you're an old schooler like me, Rogue. Yeah, well, hang around, man. This is Solar Gray, the cinematic sorcerer, saying thank you for joining me um, on the dark side of the room. We will see you next week.